Praise God. Praise God, whom all blessings flow.
All right. Good evening. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. We are thankful for his goodness and his mercy. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this evening and we thank you for being better to us than we've been to ourselves. We thank you, Lord, for being our all in all and everything we need you to be. We pray now, Lord, that as we gather on this Wednesday night as in this oasis in the middle of the week, that you would present yourself here with us today, that we might feel your spirit and be strengthened in our inner man. We come asking that you would keep your loving arms around us and protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen. We pray for the technology. We pray for those who are here, those who are watching via YouTube Live or WebEx, and we pray, Lord, that wherever we are, that you knit our hearts together in Christian love, that you would allow us to stand so close together that one can't fall for the other, and that we might indeed be blessed and strengthened, that we can go out and tell others about your son and his sacrifice for us and his willingness to lay down his life that he could take it up again. We pray for this neighborhood. We pray for all churches that are open in your name and those who are leading midweek prayer, Bible study, whatever they may call it, as long as they're calling on your name. So we ask now that you have your way with our hearts and our minds, and we thank you in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, let's see if I can get a couple of announcements here today. First of all, let me say that I fully realize that YouTube Live, the volume was gone. I went to the back and tweaked it, and we thought it started, and then all of a sudden we lost it. So continue to pray for us, and we want to thank Pastor McCauley for being logging in while I was pulling up on the parking lot to troubleshoot our live streaming setup. It looked like it was a cord, and we got that replaced, so we tested it over and over, and we feel that we're good to go. But just know that it hurts me deeply when folks are trying to log in and we're not able to deliver, because we never know what someone may miss, and so continue to be patient with us, all right? Um, we want to thank Marco Hernandez and Pastor Reyes from across the street. They were here last Saturday fixing the, some holes that we identified in the roof. We started to see some leaks in the ceiling from the last rain we had, and they were willing to go out there and repatch it. And when it was time for the material, Marcos, this is what he does for a living. He spoke to his boss about buying some, and his boss said, well, what are you going to use it for? He said, well, I'm going to help this church. He said, you can take it for free. Isn't that good? Give the Lord a hand of praise. All right. All right. So God is just working and blessing us beyond measure. All right. Every little bit helps. I want to remind you that on the 23rd, Saturday from noon to four, we'll have our, we're going to have our summer celebration. You can call it a cookout, burgers, hot dogs, chips, soda, water. We'll have that. All you need to do is show up. But someone did ask on Sunday, do we need volunteers? Well, we always need volunteers. Besides the food, there will be clothes given away. There will be some food that will be given away. So if you are interested in volunteering, just come out around 9 o'clock. The Leggetts will be here setting up, and it would be a blessing to us, all right? All right, that's 9 o'clock on Saturday, July 23rd. If you have a desire to help with the setup and the clothes giveaway and things like that. Now, you, you, you know, you're giving away clothes, but you don't want everybody to take them all, right? So you need somebody to make sure everybody gets one set, two set, right? All right, so we need help with that. Okay. As always, we want to encourage you. Well, let me do this. Love Thy Neighbor Ministries is here. You know that. Every Tuesday from 11 a.m. to noon, right here on the parking lot, plenty of food to give away. 
And the only thing is, you don't need to qualify. You don't need to prove anything. You just need to be here at 11 a.m. because it can go fast, all right? All right, a hint to the wise is sufficient. Okay. We're going to go ahead and enter into our prayer period. If you know of someone who, well, you may be hurting right now, and you may be going through some downs, and, or maybe you're celebrating. God cares about our ups, our downs, when we go sideways. He never stops loving us. But sometimes it seems like the load is too much to bear. So I want you to go to the Lord in prayer right now. And I ask that you remember me. I don't ever tell you this so that you feel sorry for me, but my supervisor has COVID. And so she's been out all week. My accountant one just left for Disneyland this morning. <laughs> so that leaves me. And when I leave here, I'm going back across the bridge because I've got something I have to get done for Thursday afternoon. And I can't wait until 7.30 tomorrow morning because I just may run out of time since I got to do everything for the next three or four days, all right? So I'm asking that you pray for me that I will be strengthened and recovered. Now, I did leave there at 4.30. On Wednesdays, I'm supposed to leave at 4, but I left at 4.30, and hey, because I say, I'll be back. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to get the job done, so pray for me, all right? I want to lift up my nephew, Isaiah, it's his 26th birthday today, but Isaiah has some challenges, and he doesn't really want us to mention them, and that's fine. But I think it's my duty, especially since it's my nephew, that I ask you to pray for him on this day and every day, all right? Some folks just have challenges, and he's a young man, very bright, very caring, uh, just has challenges, all right? Nothing that he's in jail, none of that, none of that, just... Life sometimes can be difficult for some folks, as you know that you may have your own challenges, all right? All right, I'm going to give you a minute to go to the Lord in prayer, and then I will close us out. Our Father and our God, we thank you for taking care of us. You are our strength and our support. You promised to take care of us and fight for us, and we thank you for giving us yourself. So we please ask that you would remind us that when we feel like we're all alone, that you are near to us, that you said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. Teach us how to surrender and trust in you fully, Father God, so that we might be able to reap the benefits in this life, not just when we make it to heaven. Because, Lord, we know that you are our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me, and this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Father, we love you because you first loved us. And we come tonight, Father God, asking that you would take hold of our hearts and our minds. We pray, Father God, that where we have fear, you would replace it with fear. Where we are down, Father God, that you would allow us to be lifted up, not that we can brag, Father God, but so that we can worship you and tell others about you and praise your wonderful name. Lord, we ask that you remember those on our prayer list tonight. As we lift up uh, Omara Bajant and her daughters, Aurora and Artensia, remember Judge Gail Brewster Barriola and our pastor Baratif, uh, Reverend C. Cedric Claiborne. Remember Caroline Cooper and Jesse and Dina Del Toro. Uh, Antoine DeWitt, Leroy Dunn, Margaret Drummer, Johnny May Durham, Vera Ferguson, Dora Green, Isaiah Green and family, Martha Hargrove, Hattie Jackson, Cynthia Johnson, Loveray Johnson, Patricia Johnson. Remember Adele King and Barbara Logan and family, Elisa Manzo and family. Remember William McCoy and Danae and Dior Monroe. 
We lift up Cora Sandage and Elliot Shaw Sr. and Olene Smith, Karen Snipes and family, Aleth, the mother Letha Staples and Marie Sutter and David Thomas and Patsy Thomas and family, Mother Ethel Tramble, Trina Trevilian and Lorraine West. I lift up my fellow co-laborer in the gospel, Pastor Michael Washington of the Sassoon Church of God in Christ. We ask that you would help him with his physical ailments. We pray now, Lord, that you would just look inside of our hearts and remove anything inside that's not pleasing to you. We ask that you'd help us to purify our thoughts, that we would only let good things in so good things can come out. Lord, we ask that you remember our young folk who are maybe out of school or seeking employment. We pray that you would walk with them and talk with them and that they would get to know you right now, Father God, that when times get rough, they'll know who to lean on and who to call on. We just thank you and ask that you bless our coming together. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, we're ready for our offering. And want to remind you that our stained glass window project is still underway. We were asking that each member or friend of the ministry would pledge $250, and you can give it one time over weeks, over months. But we feel that if we all would at least chip in 250 that we could take care of the almost $3,500 shortage we have. We didn't plan for the stained glass windows, but nevertheless, God has blessed us, and they're looking beautiful. As I look around and the windows have been repaired outside, Pastor McCauley has done a great job, all right? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give as I asked you to do. And as always, I got my cell phone here because you can give through PushPay, online, your smartphone. You can do it through, you can set it up for it's recurring. There are many ways. Some people mail their offering in, some drop it off. However you do it, just know we receive it and we're praying for you. All right, I've got how you can give up on the screen for those at home. All right. All right, just that easy, just that easy. All done. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for setting the ultimate when you sent your son to die for us, that he might be raised on that third day. And we thank you now, Jesus, for sitting at the right hand on the, of the Father and interceding on our behalf. And we recognize, Father God, that there is no worship without giving. And so we thank you for this opportunity. We ask that you bless the gift and the givers. Bless those who are giving tonight physically here, those who are giving online or push pay or their smartphones, those who have given already this week. We thank you, Lord, and we pray, Lord, that you would pour us out a blessing that we would not have room enough to receive. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, the cookout will be on fourth Saturday, July 23rd from noon to four. If you are looking to help, I'm talking about physically now, um, you can show up at nine o'clock here on the campus and the uh, legates can surely use your help here, all right? All right, let us look at our series of lessons tonight. We are on page 23 and Thursday, July 7th. Patient endurance is what you need now. Subtitle is keep standing, keep believing, keep fighting, and that's Hebrews 10, 36. Satan, Satan studies you. He understands your strengths and weaknesses and knows how to push you to your limits. But when you keep standing, keep believing, and keep fighting, the Bible says, blessed is the man who endures when he has been approved, he will receive the crown, James 1.12. The word approved means victory that qualifies you for greater things. I need, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly trying to drive this point home. We've all got fire insurance. We all have been washed in the blood of the lamb. We've been saved, but we don't get all of our blessings if, we, if we're not obedient, all right? And part of the, to be obedient, you have to understand that we're not fighting to get the victory, 
we're fighting and we're pressing on from victory. Jesus did all that was needed to be done on Calvary. And all of our blessings, according to Ephesians, are already in the heavenly places. They already, got our, they already have our names on it. But if we, are not, if we don't get in line with God and his will, and I'm not saying perfect, but we ought to be walking down that path to straight and narrow, then we'll receive the blessings that he has for us. All right? That's when he talks about qualifies you for greater things. The word approved, I'm sorry, um, the word endures means your character and tenacity are being tested. Are you going to keep getting up and fighting, right? You say, how long will this trial last? Only God knows. Goliath defied the armies of Israel for 40 days, according to 1 Samuel 17, 16. Satan hindered Daniel's prayer for 21 days, Daniel 10, 13. Remember now, uh, well, let's, let's go there. Let's go to Daniel. Daniel chapter 10. All right, verse 13. Now let's start at verse 10, Daniel strengthening. And behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. He says, in the presence of an angel. For, then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to ch chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. It says, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty-one days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the king of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. Now what he's saying is, twenty-one days ago you dropped on your knees and you were praying for deliverance, you were praying for your people, but um, Satan gets in the way and he blocked me from coming, so far so that I had to go get one of the archangels, which is Michael, you know there's only two names, Michael and Gabriel, and Michael is a bad man, all right? So he, angel now, so he had to come and fight, join in the fight so this angel could be released. Now, that's what's going on with us sometimes. We have praying for something. God has dispatched the angel, but the angel's got to do some fighting to get through it. Because what? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We've got a spiritual battle that's going on out there above us, and it always manifests itself down here with us. All right? But we have to keep believing and understanding that there are always things going on. All right? Now, It says, Satan is relentless, so you must be too. When it comes to prayer, your persistence overcomes his resistance. Do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Patient endurance is what you need now. Then you will receive all that he has promised. Again, all that God has promised. David didn't get into trouble with Bathsheba until he left the battlefield. Okay? So keep fighting, and God will come to your aid. He did it for Joshua. When Joshua needed extra time to defeat his enemies, God made the sun stand still and time stopped. That's Joshua 10, 12. It seemed God was saying to him, as long as the sun doesn't go down, you won't either. For the same power that's holding it up is holding you up. When Jesus healed 10 lepers, the Bible says, as they went, they were cleansed. They were probably wondering, when will it happen and how will it happen? Faith doesn't demand details and explanation. It just keeps moving forward believing God for the right result. I don't know about you, there have been times I've been praying for something, praying for deliverance, and the deliverance comes and I don't even recognize it because I moved through it, right? You've gotten through the pain. You've gotten through the struggle. That's how God works sometimes. Now, let's go back to the beginning. It says, Satan, Satan studies you. When the warriors were playing, they watched film, right? And they know tendencies. They knew that these guys couldn't go to their left. So they were constantly forcing the Celtics to go to the left. In football, they watch a lot of film. They know your tendencies, right? I remember when the, the, Raider, when the Niners beat the Washington Redskins. They, Bill Walsh, they had studied the film. They noticed that 
certain ways that the linemen set up kind of tip their hand. Satan is watching us. He knows where our weaknesses are. He knows what trips us up. So that's why I tell you all the time, you got to put on the whole armor of God. That's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 20. I try to put on my full armor of God every day. And since I taught it to you a couple weeks ago, now I also look at my schedule on my phone. And I look at it and I say, okay, what do I got to do? What do I have to do today? What is pressing on me? And, 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 and right now, I know I'm, it's pressing a lot on me, right? So I'm asking God, don't let me get discouraged. Just let me keep plugging away. All right? He'll do it for you. Keep standing. Keep believing. Keep fighting. But now, you got to fight in the name of the Lord. Paul tells us the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are powerful to the tearing down of strongholds. We can't go out there and slap folks and do all that. Nuh-uh. God is going to take care of us. Now, I didn't say you don't defend yourself, but I'm just saying we don't go out there with guns and knives and all that kind of foolishness. God is going to take care of us. All right? All right. Here we go. How to be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Acts 16, 31. All right. Have you heard the Roman road, Romans road to salvation? It's based on four simple steps found in the book of Romans. Step one, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's Romans 3, 23. We all have sinned. We are all sinners to the core, desperately in need of a savior. Step two. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The gospel means good news, and here it is. All of your sins from the cradle to the grave have been paid for by Jesus. Now, it's a gift of God. We preached this on the last two Sundays. Naaman was a Gentile, non-Israelite. He came to be cleansed of his leprosy. But he brought all these gifts. And, re and remember, the, king, uh, the prophet Elijah wouldn't take the gifts because he didn't want Naaman to misunderstand and think that the, his king who sent all these gifts had purchased his, his healing. Uh uh. God healed him. And he wanted to make sure he understood that it is God who is all powerful. And you can't pay for salvation, you can't pay for your blessings. All right? Step three. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5, 8. You can't earn salvation by good works. God gives it to you freely. All you have to do is receive it by faith. Step four, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It didn't say might. It said could have. It didn't say hopefully might be. No, it said you shall be saved. All right. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whomsoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's that shall word again. Does your life feel empty? Do you long for peace? To know your sins are forgiven and you have a home in heaven when you die. Today, place your trust in Jesus and make him Lord of your life. Just pray these words, Lord, I surrender my life to you. Come into my heart. By faith, I receive the gift of eternal life. Thank you for setting everything right between you and me. In Jesus' name, amen. We try and make it too complicated. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he's God's son. Believe that he laid down his life for us. Believe that he was sinless. And believe that God raised him up on the third day. And his, his life that he gave for us was a ransom for each and every one of us. You can't be too good or too bad. All right? Okay. Next, Saturday, July 9th. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. James 3, 18. Don't lose your peace. Satan knows that God's word can only be received by a heart and mind that are at peace. So he will do everything he can to keep you upset. Did you see that? We just talked about Satan. Satan can only operate in darkness. And we are children of the light. 
So he has to fool us by getting us upset, by making us sad. We talk about halt, right? H-A-L-T. Don't be too, ang too hungry. Don't be too angry. Don't be too lonely. And don't be too tired. Why? Satan loves to jump on you. H-A-L-T. When you're in that situation. He can't do anything because he can't live in light. But he'll try to confuse you so you'll leave the light and wander into his darkness. Now, all right, he loves it when you get into an argument just before church and spend the entire service feeling bad. That's why you must do whatever it takes to keep your peace. There is power in peace. If the devil can't get you upset, he has no power over you. He only gains control when you lose it. He keeps you upset in order to steal your peace, confuse you, and make you run in circles. Don't let him do it. Next time you get worked up about some issue, stop and ask yourself, what's the enemy trying to do here? If I give in to these emotions, what will the end result be? When you're stressed out, you lose your joy. When you lose your joy, you lose your strength. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah 8.10. So it's essential that you exercise self-control and try to keep your peace. James writes, the wisdom that is from above is peaceable. James 3.17. In the message, Eugene Peterson paraphrases this scripture, real wisdom, God's wisdom, begins with a holy life and is characterized by getting along with others. Let me say this. We are going to sin. Some of us do a little bit more than others, but all sin is sin. Don't let Satan tell you you're a loser. Don't, tell Satan, don't let Satan tell you that it's hopeless for you. Uh-uh. Uh, no, anybody, if Judas, who betrayed Jesus, had a repented and went back to Jesus and asked for forgiveness, he could have been saved, all right? All right? No. I, I, wait a minute, I don't know if I need to say that he was not saved or not. I, 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 got, I got to be careful. But what I'm trying to say is there's no one that is too bad. Okay? All right. Now, it, with uh, peace, it is gentle and reasonable, overflowing with mercy and blessings. That's wisdom. You can develop a healthy, robust community that lives right with God and enjoy its results only if you do the hard work of getting along with each other. Now, getting along with others can be hard work, but it's worth it to have peace. And those of us in the household of faith, we really need to make sure that we try and get along with each other, all right? There's nothing worse than folks to come in and find a church that can't get along with splits and divisions. We can't allow that. None of us, we all are the same. We all are sinners. Nobody's any better than anybody else. But we all have a role to play. Everybody can't be the preacher. Everybody can't be the lead singer. Everybody can't be the musician, all right? But we all have a place to play, uh, a role to play, a place to function. All right. Provision. Uh, number Sunday, July 10th. Never lose your passion for God. Passion for your house has consumed me. That's Psalm 69 and 9. Question. Are you passionate about God or merely, merely passive? Notice the steps that led to Peter's denial of Jesus. Step one, Satan has asked to sift you, each of you, like wheat. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. Luke 22, 31 through 32. Jesus warns Peter he is a target, but Peter doesn't believe him. Step two, they arrested Jesus and led him to the high priest's home, and Peter followed at a distance. Peter was one of Christ's closest disciples, but you'll notice now he is following him at a distance. Step three, a servant girl said, this man was one of Jesus' followers, but Peter denied, denied it. Woman, he said, I don't even know him. Step four. That moment the Lord turned and looked at Peter, suddenly the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. Wow, doesn't that sting? And Peter left the courtyard weeping bitterly. 
Here is how it works. First, you assume that you won't fail. So you're unprepared for Satan's attack when it comes. Attack when it comes. Next, you allow the problems and pressures of life to make you forget that your first commitment must always be to the Lord. That's why I bailed out of there at 4.30 today. I said, I got to get here and get my mind right for Bible study, all right? If somebody gets upset because I left at 4.30 because I'm under the crunch, then they can take the job away. God will provide, all right? Finally, you end up spiritually defeated. You say, that will never happen to me. That's what Peter said. The reason Satan hath desired to have you is because he knows when you become passionate about doing God's will, you will be unstoppable. So never lose your passion for God. That's your passion for God. You'll be unstoppable. You're not going to be unstoppable just because you've got passion, <laughs> passion for God. You're not going to have, uh, you're not going to be unstoppable just because you've got zeal. You've got a lot of folks fired up. i got zeal for the warriors. It won't get me to heaven. It won't help me to be a better preacher, all right? It won't help me to be a better leader, a better person, but passion for God will keep you going. It'll give you strength to keep on keeping on, even when you're a little tired. Amen? All right. Moving on. Now, notice that we're talking about peace. We're talking about passion. Um, let's turn over to Revelation. 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 And I think we want chapter 3. Because we got this church that had a problem. All right. All right. Let's look at the church at Laodicea. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, beginning at verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. There's no passion. I would that thou were cold or hot. Because at least if you were cold, the people just leave you and go on. If you were hot, they'd come and join you. But if you just wishy-washy, they don't even know what to do. Where's the passion? 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm, no passion, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. God's going to vomit them out. Come on now, when you want, your, you want your coffee hot, or you want it iced coffee, that's what folks do. You don't want it lukewarm. You either want iced tea or hot tea. You either want cold chocolate milk or hot chocolate. You don't want it room temperature. 17, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that, that you may see. He's basically saying, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous there, therefore, and repent. Get your passion back. How do you get your passion back? By studying God's word, reading God's word, talking to him, praying to him, asking him to strengthen you, all right? He will strengthen you. Ask for more wisdom, okay? God wants it, okay? He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he will, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and is set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. All right? Get your passion. Monday, July 11th. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. Three things a leader shouldn't do, should not do. As a leader, here are three things you shouldn't do. You shouldn't be afraid to try something new, Isaiah 43, 19. When you put someone into a new role, they will make mistakes. It's inevitable, but it's how they learn. While locking them into the same routine takes the wind out of their sails, 
Being a leader means risking their failures and biting your lip as you let them toddle out into the unknown. Like a parent who prays harder when their teen takes the family car out for their first drive, you must accept that the challenges which frighten you are actually liberating to others. Number two, you shouldn't confuse individual loyalty with team building. You got a whole lot of folks that look for loyalty at all costs. Uh-uh, can't support you when you're wrong, okay? Need to be able to tell you the truth when, you, when, when you're going the wrong way, whether you're a leader or a follower. Works both ways. It's good to work closely with key individuals, but it's also important to stay connected to each other. You must take, make sure that everybody gets to be on the team, feels valued, and learns how to interact with one another. Now, you can't make everybody interact, but you can give them opportunities to interact. You share it with everybody, all right? Number three. You shouldn't try to micromanage people. Uh-oh. There's a difference between managing people and leading them. Managing people requires an eye for detail, whereas leading them involves vision sharing, goal setting, and motivating. And you must know the difference. When you micromanage rather than lead, morale plummets. <clears throat> because people need clear objectives and the freedom to figure out how to reach them. Don't micromanage. It diminishes the sense of ownership those under you and around you need for good team dynamics and problem solving. President Eisenhower once said, pull the string and it will follow you wherever you wish. Push it and it will go nowhere. All right? All right. Again, you want to set goals, you want to make sure everybody understands them, and then you got to let folks give them enough rope where they can fall, fail, make mistakes, but they ought to be able to explain and learn why they made the mistake. I've been doing this, that work a long time. I, we're going to make mistakes, you're going to do it, but I'm more concerned, did you understand what went wrong, okay? I was looking at something today, and the young lady had posted it. Uh, she called something, well, don't worry about it. I sent her a nice email and I said, hey, explain to me how this entry happened because I want to understand the thinking behind it. I know it's wrong, but I want to know what, if you were thinking, okay? All right. Here we go, Tuesday, July 12th. Those who speak rashly will come to ruin. We got two ears, two eyes, one mouth. It would behoove us to double our listening, pay attention with our eyes, and speak as a last resort, amen? Here we go, harsh words can chop off a person's ability to hear what you're saying. When Jesus was betrayed by Judas, he didn't retaliate even though he could have called 12 legions of angels to his defense, Matthew 26, 53. Then the mob came, laid hands on him, and arrested him. At that point, Peter drew his sword and chopped off the high priest's servant's ear. He was probably thinking, we don't have to take this. But Jesus said, that's not how you handle things. Remember, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not flesh and blood, okay? Then he touched the man's ear and healed him. Peter had a tendency to talk when he should have been listening and got into things he had no business getting into. He needed to learn how to wait on God and exercise humility and discernment. God had great plans for him, but if he wanted to fulfill them, he couldn't do it by chopping off people's ears when they upset him. <laughs> There's a lesson here. You can't fly off the handle whenever you feel like it. You must become sensitive to God's spirit. If he tells you, say nothing, then you must stand there quietly, even if it means letting someone think they're right when you know they're not. You must learn that God doesn't owe you an explanation. You can hinder your spiritual growth or God's blessings in your life when you don't control what you say. People who think that compared to adultery or stealing, this is no big deal. No, perhaps you think that compared to adultery or stealing, this is no big deal. Think again. 
Those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruin. It's always good to wait a minute, think about it. You don't always have to respond. And oftentimes in a debate, we're not listening to the other side. We're getting ready to, we're preparing our comeback. We would do much better as a nation if our politicians would listen to each other and see if there's some middle ground. But everything is so polarizing nowadays. Families are polarized. Uh, communities, neighbors, you know, we need to be more patient, kinder, and gentler, all right? The fruits of the Spirit, okay? All right. Let's turn over to Romans 12. And Romans 12, 9, reading from the King James Version. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. That means don't be hung up on the rich and the powerful. Treat everybody the same, okay? All right. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Okay? Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil but overcome evil with good, all right? Let me run that back to you with the New Living Translation, all right? Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse nine, reading from the New Living, here you go. Don't just pretend to love others, uh-huh. Really love them, hate what is wrong, hold tightly to what is good, love each other with genuine affection, and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. That's that passion. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. That's what we talked about earlier tonight, right? Keep on keeping on, persevere. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. 14, bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy, and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people, and don't think you know it all. All right. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. And I always remember Pastor Claiborne <laughs> would throw in, the lady said, well, I'm going I'm I'm to be good to them and nice because I want to burn that so-and-so's brains out. <laughs> I don't think that's the spirit we want here. That's more Old Testament. New Testament, we want to love and be kind. Here's the deal. If you bother me so much and I'm bitter towards you, if I learn to pray for you and lift you up, then it will do something to my heart. It's not going to take any skin off of me. It's not going to make me little, little. If anything, it's going to make me stronger because I'm able to pray for those who mistreat me. I didn't say you got to love them. No, wait a minute. I didn't say you got to like them, but we do have to love them. No, there's this distinction between like and love, because love is not an emotion. 
Love is a decision. That's the decision that drove Christ to the cross. He loved us with that agape love, okay? All right. Last one for tonight. God is still on the throne. The Lord sits on his throne in heaven, Psalms 11 and 4. The psalm is asked, when the foundations for good collapse, what can good people do? Then he goes on to answer his own question. The Lord sits on his throne in heaven. When sickness comes, when your marriage fails, when your children suffer, when death strikes, what are you to do? Remember that God is still on the throne and he's watching over you. No detail escapes his notice or care. He works according to a plan and it's not usually a plan we can understand when we're going through hard times. Only in looking back do we realize that his goodness and mercy have followed us all the days of our lives, Psalms 23, 6. Joseph landed in prison. Moses spent 40 years in the desert. Daniel ended up in chains. There, these were dismal moments. Who could possibly have seen any good in them? Who could have known that Joseph the prisoner was only a single promotion away from becoming Joseph the prime minister? Who would have thought God was providing Moses 40 years of wilderness training in the same desert through which he would lead the people? Who would have imagined that Daniel the captive would soon become the king's counselor? God carries out his plans like that. He did it for Joseph, Moses, and Daniel, and he will do the same for you. You so trust him. He will give you the grace you need to get through this situation. When you ask God, where are you? He answers, I'm with you and will watch over you. I will not leave you until I've done what I have promised you. Genesis 28, 15. God will never leave us nor forsake us. He's, we, we can depend on his word. So we got to learn to trust him. We, can, we do not walk by sight. We walk by faith. All right. Hope something was said or done that would encourage you tonight. I hope you wrote down something that you can make a change tonight. Something that you can try to do differently. But most of all, we've got to get our passion back. And we got to make sure that we are obedient. Didn't say perfection. But all of us can improve. Listen more. Watch more, talk less, all right? Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the technology apparently working. We thank you for your word, which is sharper than a two-edged sword. It can cut coming and going. But one thing we know, Lord, is when you cut, <laughs> it's so we can be healed. When you cut, Lord, is to remove something that is malignant and replace it with your love. So, Lord, we ask that you dismiss us from this place but never from your presence. For those who are watching via WebEx or YouTube Live, we pray that you fill their home with love and blessings. We pray, Lord, for Isaiah again. We pray that you be with him and strengthen him. We pray for all of our young folk. We pray for our elders, Lord, who've been on the battlefield a long time. They may not be as fast as they used to be. They may not be able to do all the things they used to do, but they sure have gray hair, white hair, and that means a lot of wisdom that we can learn from. So we ask you to keep loving arms around our elders, our young folk, and those of us in between. And one thing is for sure, we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Keep us now in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Lord, if the Lord is willing, we'll see you on Sunday. God bless you.